I saw it more as like a little kid following like a bigger sister or whatever. Might make her sick to even hear about that. I didn't think I was doing 100% imitation. And that was my fault. That is another bad that I did. I did not consider someone else's feelings on the whole situation. And I'll take, I'll take full responsibility for that part. I messed up there. I didn't uh, make sure to check with her if it was okay, if she thought it was too close. Uh, because like I said, it never entered my mind. If people are confusing me for her, I don't want that. I don't ever, ever want to be confused for her. Especially not now. Seeing how vindictive she is, seeing how evil this document is, I don't ever want to be associated with her again. So I'm going to start making different thumbnails because I do not want to be associated with that cat Gyaru VTuber. I don't want to have anything to do with her. I loathe her at this point. Hello there, I am Rex Nebula. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about all things VTuber. Today, we will be talking about this VTuber right here, Salvi, the Mad Squirrel, as he defends himself against his fellow drama tuber, Lydia Nekozao, as she accuses him of copying her videos for the past eight months. Some of you may remember that we covered Lydia Nekozawa's side of the story in our previous video, where we covered what she said in her Google Doc. Obviously, to understand what's happening in the story, it's important the multiple different sides of the story. So, after looking at Lydia's side of the story, we will now look at Salvi's side of his story. The VTuber Salvi would put out a three-hour response video covering Lydia's document and responding to it. He would say, I'm forced to do this since people have been saying I am a coward and distancing themselves because they think I have not responded to the hit piece Google Doc. Here is my video response recorded April 3rd and went live on April 4th. This video is three hours long and so we will attempt to summarize and talk about the key points Salvi has mentioned in his video within 20 minutes or less. Before we begin, I would just like to say I won't be giving my opinion too much in this video simply because it's quite a task to summarize the entire three hour video to something much smaller. We will not be covering everything. This is going to be an overview of what happened. We will be talking about key points, but I'm going to keep most of my opinion in the beginning of the video. After that, it will be solely Salvi's side of the story. We did a previous video where we gave only Lydia's side of the story, so it's only fair that right now we give Salvi's side of the story. After reading both Salvi and Lydia's account of their own stories, I just feel that they both feel betrayed and they both feel hurt and confused regarding what has happened. They both have different views regarding the situation and I think it's a sad situation that friends that have been together for years are now splitting apart because of an argument. It is my hope that one day they will regain their friendship, but obviously not now, not when tensions are high and both parties have bad-mouthed the other. Lydia has called Salvi a creepy and disgusting person, while Salvi has called Lydia a vindictive person with a prosecution complex that wants to crush him like an ant. And like I said, it's a persecution fetish. It really does seem like a victim complex. She's thinking that she's being copied. And I, why am I going rough on this? Because I'm pissed. Because this really is trying to make me look as creepy as possible. And in fact, she put out this document specifically to harm me. Yeah, tensions are high, so it's unlikely that they will repair their friendship anytime soon. These things take time. You need to give them both space to rest, have time to process the situation and move on. Maybe one day they'll be friends again, but that day won't be today. I would also like to say that regardless of whose side you take or any opinions you make, after seeing both sides of the story, I hope no one harasses them because if there's one thing both Salvi and Lydia has stressed, is that they don't want their fan bases attacking one another. So even if you have a negative opinion of one or the other, I hope both Lydia and Salvi's fan bases try not to attack the other as both parties take time to heal from the situation. So yeah, let's begin the video. So I'll be covering what Salvi has said to Lydia. I will be talking about what Salvi has said in no particular order. If there's anything you think I've missed, you can just discuss it in the comments down below. I'll go back to Salvi's response video, which is three hours long. If any of you are interested in reacting to the video, please do so. It's important to look at both sides of the story, and it would be interesting to look at the opinions many of you have. So, what has Salvi said about Lydia? So, in response to the fact that people may have confused his videos for her videos, he would say he didn't want to be associated with her, and he didn't want anything to do with her anymore. 
Falvi believes that Lydia is on a vindictive warpath. She wants him to crash and burn. Falvi claims that she is actively weaponizing her reach to attack him. He also thinks she is using Legal Mindset's popularity to destroy his image and collapse. Falvi would also say he was kicked from servers and even blocked from some of the other servers. Falvi didn't like how Lydia handled the situation. He did not like that she didn't talk to him directly and thinks he went on a roundabout way dealing with the situation by badmouthing him in servers. Falvi will confirm he has anxiety and he has taken emergency doses to cope. I can't tell if Salvi is joking or being serious about this. He also mentioned that he was autistic. I did not consider someone else's feelings on the whole situation. I've been told by my doctor that it is because of the autism. It will be up to Salvi to prove it if he wants to. Lydia's a Google Doc has damaged his integrity and some things in the document are stuff he considers defamation. Harvey claims Lydia Cherry picked information to deliberately make him look bad and that he's an idiot for trusting people. He claims Lydia has a victim mentality and a persecution complex and that people already believe her story over his. Falvi would confirm that he did, however, try to emulate and not copy some of her older videos for his older channel. It was YouTube trending. Some of the things were some things that she saw I found interesting, and I was like, hey, I want my take on this. And I did it. Unoriginal. You can call it copying. You can call it what you will. I can see how that can be considered copying. I didn't think it was anything bad at that point. I didn't think I was straight copying. I didn't think I was doing 100% imitation. I didn't think any of that. And that was my fault. That is another bad that I did. Salvi has two channels, the new channel, which is at Salvi VTuber, and he has an older channel where he used to do more reaction videos. Salvi confirms taking inspiration from Lydia's video thumbnails and received multiple different ideas about video topics to cover after seeing what Lydia was covering back in the day. Salvi would also say he did not copy all of her content directly and he feels that he is emulating her content instead of copying. He would go on to confirm that he does also copy from False and Cure, takes inspiration, emulates bigger creators like Hero Hey and Rev says Desu, but he doesn't copy them directly. We have the same things popping out because guess what? Niji Sanji, our Niji Sanji has the same things popping out. Hero Hey or Rev says Desu would have the same things popping out. Uh, our Kuro Sanji has the same things popping out. Regardless, uh, the squirrel believes that Twitter will choose to be friends with the one with the Google Doc expose. He accuses Lydia of blocking him first, weaponizing her bigger sphere of influences, among other things. Balvi would also have some choice words to say regarding Lydia's uh, VTuber model. He would claim Lydia hated YouTubers and people who use their bodies to get popular. Salvi would also claim that Lydia once hated Shy Lily, which is a very popular indie VTuber. Whether this is true or not, I am unsure. Saying this to see, to say like I'm a gaslighter, I'm, an, I'm, a, mani I'm a manipulator. This is just quite literally a starry-eyed uh, idiot <laughs> looking at someone who's bigger than them and seeing if I can learn some things from them. Look at her Twitter and you'll see how things have changed. You'll see exactly how things have changed. She didn't have huge boobs. She didn't have huge cleavage. She didn't have the Gyaru Tan. She didn't have the pretty much nakedness that she has as, I don't know if it is a Twitch reward. I don't know if it's a reward for uh, someone giving them bits or if it's something that she just does because she wants to. But there's a part where she'll take off her the shirt that she has and she has the the uh, leopard print bra. She has her leopard print bra, which, you know, because of jiggle physics, jiggle physics are jiggle physics. It's not a swimsuit, it's a bra. You look on her, on her Twitter and she also has a post where she says, I don't have references, but here is my VTuber, where she sews it in a bra and she sews panties that are, let's just say they're very low on the crotch. So, you know, people do what they gotta do to get you know, through the world, she's not the only one who does it. She's not the only one who does the whole uh, lewd look or anything like that, or trying to get the, the, the gaze or anything like that. But I'm saying it's kind of hypocritical for uh, her to say that I'm manipulative or try to say that I'm manipulative. And then she goes and changes things to kind of, you know, maybe draw a little bit more attention. That's just my opinion, though. 
And here's one thing. She can do what she wants. She can be the cat Gyaro VTuber. She can show cleavage all she wants. She can take off her shirt and show her bra all she wants. That is something that she, she is free to do. But people shouldn't throw stones in glass houses when you have things that are that are fishy on your end. With those things, it seems manipulative on my end to do those things. When you in the past have said you hate lewd tubers, you have said you hate people who use their bodies for popularity, you have said yourself that you don't like people like Shy Lily and others because they have gotten popularity from who they know, not what they do or what they know. You're in the same shoes right now where you have gotten popularity based on who you know, which is, of course, legal mindset and other people. And you do a really good job, but you cannot deny that they signal boosted you and they got you to where you are, just like people signal boost Shy Lily and other people bow the whale, etc. when they first started out. This is something that happens in the VTuber community. You yourself have told me before that you don't like that part of the VTuber community. And now that you're a part of it, you go and fling stones. Balvi would go on to talk about his history with Lydia Nekozawa regarding Lydia's accusations that Salvi wants to be like her. Balvi says Lydia helped him when he was small, first met Lydia at 1500 Twitch followers when he had zero, in response to Lydia calling him a manipulator. When he was praising him, Balvi said he was a starry-eyed moron and wanted someone to be his mentor. He's been in contact with Lydia since the year 2020. Salvi would also say that he felt like a little kid following a bigger sister. I saw it more as like a little kid following like a bigger sister or whatever. Might make her sick to even hear about that. Salvi would reveal that he asked Lydia what he should do about React stuff. He did see her as a mentor and he wanted to be like Lydia, like her. He admits she was charismatic and he actually respected her at one point. Right now though, after all the controversy, Salvi believes that Lydia is trying to take his community from him. So he doesn't care if she used to be his friend, he just wants Lydia to leave him alone. Salvi has said he is trying to move on, he has found his way of doing things and claims he was never looking at Lydia, he was looking at Hirohei or Rev says Desu, and that he is making efforts to change his content after she claimed he copied her. He would say while he did copy or rather emulate some of her video ideas in the past, that was back when he had no clue about YouTube and saw her as a mentor. Okay, now we reach the part where it's Salvi trying to defend himself against Lydia's accusations. It's up to you to determine whether or not he was in the right. So in response to Lydia's accusations that Salvi was making some reaction videos as she was, he would say this. I didn't uh, make sure to check with her if it was okay, if she thought it was too close, because she was more successful than me. She was bigger than me. And it honestly felt like she saw me as an ant. It felt like, eh, he can copy me all he wants. I'm getting more popularity anyways. I'm getting more in my videos anyways. He can copy me and he can do exactly what he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants. He's not going to reach my point. And that's why I didn't consider how she would feel. That was a bad on my part. But like I said, I didn't consider how she would feel because, yeah, I felt like an ant. We can talk about the same things. I'm interested in it. I, I've been... A fan of certain things that she's gonna make. The squirrel would admit again he only does some of the things that Lydia claims, like the emulation in the old channel. There were, however, quite a few things Lydia accused him of that made him really angry. One of them was the MF Ghost thumbnail accusations that really pissed him off. Mainly because Lydia thought his videos were a direct copy of hers when it wasn't the case. Salvi would then angrily show his YouTube channel saying he made an MF Ghost video for every single episode and that wasn't copying. He was a real fan of Initial D. He swears he did a video for the official trailer, many episodes of MF Ghost. He gets quite worked up as well. Salvi would then try to admit his faults. I will admit some things were a little too close to the mark and I will accept that. Some things were too close. That was my mistake. That was my failing as a person. That was my failing as a VTuber, as a content creator. That was my failing. I have made an endeavor and made a hard attempt to change and to make it better.
Salvi would also refute some of Lydia's accusations regarding the shift in content. In response to Lydia saying Salvi only did VTuber news because of her, Salvi would say he did VTuber stuff because the Selentatsky controversy happened. Salvi chose to do Niki Sanji content because he saw Kirohei, Refsis Desu, and False doing it. Salvi would then present some proof and argues he wasn't copying. Salvi would argue when Lydia went to a convention as she wasn't streaming, so if he was copying her by watching her VODs and making videos are based on her VODs as she claims, then he shouldn't have been able to make any videos when she was not streaming. Doesn't have a header? I do. In those five days since she was gone, I did this one, I did the Luka Kaneshiro one, I did the full document on Luka Kaneshiro, I did the Mad Frenzy, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. before she even came back. I did like nine or ten videos before she came back. If I'm copying her, then why the hell would I make nine videos in five days if I'm actually copying you? This is where it's like a persecution fetish. It's like a victim complex. I don't know what it is. Yes, I will admit in my early days, I was like a lost puppy. I was trying to figure out my place and I flew too close to the sun. I'll admit that. But like you said, like you saw on my Mad Salvi channel, I've done a lot of things that were different around the same things that she mentioned. Bobby would also claim that Lydia had a victim complex and that anything he does just automatically looks like copying, claims he's only using her thumbnails for inspiration. Then we return to the claim where Lydia was talking about how Salvi was looking at her VODs or her live streams in real time while he was live streaming and then editing his normal 10 minute to 20 minute YouTube videos on his live stream so he could get the videos up before her in an upload race. In response to that, Salvi would deny the allegations. He would discuss why he started talking about VTuber drama on his live stream. Apparently, he used to take five hours to make a YouTube video because he recorded the voiceovers one by one. These days, Salvi has figured out that he can just record live streams with content in it and then edit it later. Salvi would double down by saying there was no way he was getting his edits out while he was streaming and that he only did this once because of various circumstances. Salvi would also say he never watches Lydia's VODs and he never watches her streams I don't watch her streams. And he addresses the video Lydia showed in her Google Doc, where he was seen telling his audience he was trying to grab stuff to put into the timeline, and he was grabbing that a week ago. He usually doesn't do that. Well, you would say that Lydia was wrong. He doesn't have people helping him, and he is a one-man show, and he shows evidence of doing the edits himself by showing a bunch of clips. There was another accusation that Lydia put out that Sally was copying her thumbnails and that the blue border he had on his thumbnails was actually copied from Lydia. Salvi would go on to refute this saying he copied the idea from False ID, not her. False ID has a purple border on his YouTube thumbnails. So Salvi had the idea of putting a border around his thumbnails but he would make it a blue border, make sure he looked different from other VTubers. In response to Lydia's revelations where she showed Discord conversations where Salvi faced some accusations of clout chasing from another creator, Salvi would say the reason why he deleted the Discord comments on that specific clout chasing conversation was because he believed Lydia was trying to use his past conversations against him. So he tried to delete the Discord conversations. Salvi will confirm the reason why he deleted those comments on Discord but stopped halfway was because he was lazy again and that no one should accuse anyone of being malicious when the reason can just be explained away as someone being lazy. Salvi thought nothing about deleting the Discord comments but now that he looks at it, it looks bad. Salvi would go on to clarify that he was not the one who raided her Discord and he does not know who raided her maliciously. At one point in Lydia's Google document, she would show both her and Salvi covering the VNU controversy and she would show the thumbnail side by side, alleging Salvi was trying to make a morning upload to appear to be faster at covering the content compared to her. In response to this, Salvi would say he was just testing out and experimenting when to upload for YouTube and he apologizes for causing her stress. Salvi would go on to complain that these issues where he was copying her never popped up 
until he became larger. Back then he was a two view, so the issue never came up. But now that some of his videos became bigger and bigger, all of a sudden the issues would start popping up regarding him copying her. Davi claims Olivia only became worried about his content once he had become a larger VTuber. Back then he was a two view and she never complained to him about it. But now that his videos are bigger and he's getting more than 2000 concurrent viewers on his live streams, now the issues start popping up. He acknowledges that they do have same thumbnails for their videos and looking at both her channel and his channel, he can see how they both look similar objectively. Salvi would also address Lydia's concerns when Lydia would find it problematic that one of Salvi's mods would try to contact her after the controversy. Salvi would confirm the reason why his moderator Ghost of the Forest would try to contact her because the moderator was trying to fix a problem. Overall, Salvi has claimed that he did try talking to her to resolve the problem but there was no response. He blocked him first, several days before she made the tweet claiming Salvi was copying her. We're nearing the end here, Salvi would also provide some personal reasons trying to explain why he did what he did throughout various points in the video, which we are covering right now. Overall, Salvi says he's bad at social cues, relationships and friendships. He claims he was not malicious towards Lydia, he was just stupid. He accepts he doesn't have any creativity when it came to making his own thumbnails. Back then, he was like a young boy trying to make his own way. And Lydia was like the older sister that was charismatic and he admired. You can see why it might look like copying, but he claims it's emulation and not copying. Salvi would go on to provide some proof that he is socially awkward, he's a dense person and other people have thought the same way. Someone wrote a letter to him to explain some stuff that he couldn't understand because he's dense. Salvi would not clarify what that stuff was. Regarding Lydia's expose and her accusations against him where she accused him of copying her content, Salvi would say he honestly thought everything was normal with her because she was acting like nothing was wrong and that confuses the hell out of him. Salvi the squirrel would confirm that the visual part looks bad and looking at both of their channels, it looks similar and he acknowledges it. But he thinks that Lydia is doing the expose because he affected her bottom line by getting popular. However, Salvi would confirm he will not delete the evidence. All the videos on his channel will remain on his channel. Salvi would also say he doesn't copy everything, even though he does emulate, and he takes inspiration from other VTubers other than Lydia, which includes False, Hero Hey, and Rev says Desu. So that's the end of the video. That is Salvi's side of the story. If you're interested in listening to Lydia's side of her story, you can check out our previous video where we go through Lydia's Google Doc completely to believe who you want to believe, support who you want to support. Regardless of what your opinions are after seeing both sides of the situation and accusations that Salvi is copying Lydia, understand that both parties do not want anyone harassing the other. I don't want that as well, so try to be respectful of each other's fan bases. Let's give them some space to breathe and move on. And then perhaps in the future they can kiss and make up. That's it for now. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. This is Rex Nebula, signing out.